All right. Hello, everyone. Dr. Troy Duquitz here. And today we are going to have a discussion about purpose and productivity. You can see the form. I guess it's over here <laughs> on my screen. And um, there's a, a number of reasons for this. Um, number one, I think, you know, I look back towards uh, second quarter here of 2019. Uh, for those of you who don't know, ton of stress for us in terms of we were out of our house. We had a flooded uh, basement. Uh, we ended the second month of this quarter by being caught in a tornado, uh, wrecking our car. Now that's in the shop. Like lots of lots of just fun and interesting things that have happened. We were out of our home for four days. Um, the list kind of goes on. Um, we're still actually dealing with some of the uh, wrath of the sewage line breaking as a result of bad landscapers. So that's just to get you uh, caught up if you haven't been aware of some of those stories. So I don't wanna to go too far down that pathway because I wanna focus on what this is about. And this is about purpose of productivity. And the reason I bring up the stress of two out of three months in this quarter is because I've still been able to be productive. So I still have about 10 days left until the end of the quarter as of this recording. And it's interesting, I was on a call yesterday with one of our groups and I had brought up that I was off track, off track, off track on my targets. And I woke up this morning and I meditated. And in my meditation, I was like, are you sure about that? I mean, I still have almost 10 days left in this quarter. And I actually have an opportunity to end on track in many of those areas. So um, we'll see where I end up. But I, I had to think then like, OK, I just shared this this week on our on our page. Some of you have received this via email, but I want to make sure everybody knows how to use this particular document called Purpose and Productivity. And that's the document that is right there. Why? Because as I look through two out of three months being incredibly stressful, I was still able to produce, I was still able to get stuff done. It wasn't pretty. I can tell you that in those two months, I felt like I worked harder, like actually worked harder than I have in years. And I don't mean in a way where I felt like I'm hustling and getting stuff done. I mean, like I had to get myself in the game to be able to get stuff done. It was a lot harder to get myself into the game to get work done. It's happened to all of us. I don't have a problem sharing that with you. We all go through these ebbs and flows in life and this was just one of those times. But one of the things that helped me is this document. I created this years ago. You've heard me talk about reflect and project. I sit on Sunday morning, I project my week and what it is that I, where I wanna go and what I wanna produce over the course of that week. So that when I look at my schedule, it's not a bunch of bullshit stuff that's in there. It is purposeful and impactful things that are gonna help me to increase my productivity. Now, some of you still fight the scheduling thing. I don't know why you fight it. Oh, it's too much work. I don't wanna sit down and plan. But yet, as the adage goes, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And so I've been scheduling for almost 20 years. You've been introduced to it. Some of you are using it, way to go. Others of you aren't. You need to get back on the bus. One of the ways to get you there, whether you choose to use a schedule or not, is to use this form. Stop using a to-do list. Start using something that is purposeful. I call it a purpose list. And now we have a purpose and productivity form that you can fill out week by week. And if you follow what you put on this form, it's going to significantly increase your productivity. Me personally, when I first made this up, I wrote it on an email. I sat there with the email and I would basically, and I have, I have two screens here. So I, look at, so I have the, this email sitting here with the list of things that I need to put into my schedule. And then I drop these things into my schedule. And then daily, I pull out my reflect and project journal and I can see if I'm on track or off track. And then I can add things down at the bottom here that might need to be plugged into my schedule for the next day as a part of my productivity because I have what's called productivity time. And so there might be a course correct. These are the items that are course correcting the schedule that I created because shit happens through the week and it keeps me on track. Super, super cool. So you might sit there and go, man, that just seems like a lot of work and that's okay. You can think that. But the thing is, is how bad do you want what you say you want? And what I know is for some of you, whether it's this quarter or quarter before or quarter coming up, you start to get stressed. You start to panic. You get fearful. Maybe the money's not going to be there or you get fearful, but maybe we're not going to be able to maintain where we're at right now. Like, I don't know where it is for you, but panic, fear, doubt, anxiety will never serve you. Those are not things that will help you to grow. Those are not things that put you in a frame of a sense of urgency. They actually move you further away from it. But, but, if you can keep a cool head, it doesn't mean you can't get upset about something. It doesn't mean you can't get emotional about something, but you keep a cool head and you plug into something like this. It says, okay, what can I do to produce this week? What can I do to produce today? And when you do that, you shift the energy from panic where you're not going to make very good decisions into focus. We're going to be able to focus on things that are going to help you to grow and expand.
certainly hope that makes sense. So let's talk about this document. You can see it right in front of you. I keep pointing right here because it's right in front of me as I'm sharing it with you. This document, here's what you can do. Two options. Number one, you fill it out every single week, one day, Sunday morning, fill it out. Friday morning, fill it out for the following week. It's going to force you to think about the last week. Do not think about the last week based on feelings, based on facts. You must reflect and project based on facts. I reflect on the last week based on facts. And I use that moving forward. Well, I guess you can't have facts of the next week. I project the next week of where I want to go and what I want my facts to be. Way better way to say it. So here's what you do. Daily focus. What's a daily focus? I started realizing a long time ago, like there are certain things that I just do every single week. Hell, most of them are already in my schedule. But I want to make sure that there is a check here that I have those things scheduled because they're so important. There are daily tasks that you know that you need to do. Boom, you write them down here. There are weekly things that you need to do. I don't necessarily need to do them every day, but I do need to do them weekly. And that might be a video on Wednesday. That might be an audio on Thursday. I don't know what it is for you, but there is a weekly focus that you have. And you write that weekly focus there. This will very rarely change. And the time that it will probably change is when you realize you need to create, like stop checking the boxes as we do at the core four. You need to stop checking the boxes. So if it's do a video on Wednesday, it might be do a video on Wednesday and Friday. Do a video on Monday and Wednesday to just kind of up your game. And so that will be a course correct based on that if you start to feel like you're getting stale on it. You just need to increase. You don't need to stop doing it. What you need to do is you need to shift your energy as you go into it. So I'm going to up my game this next week and I'm going to do two videos instead of one. So that is a daily focus and then there is a weekly focus. Then I have a core four focus. You go, well, yeah, dude, core four, you do your core four. Yeah, I get that. However, you and I all know that we all, we all have done this where we're checking the boxes on our core four. So this gives me a chance to look back in the last week in my core four. Where's my energy been? You all have the core four form that you use or you should be using. That's what this is right here, right? That allows you to track your core four. It allows you to track your energy. And so where your power is, where your, where your energy is at the end of the week. So you can look at it and you can go, man, I was really off this week. Where was I off the most? Wow. It looks like I was really missing. If I pull this up, it goes, okay, it looks like I was really missing in fuel. I was really missing in my memoirs. I was really missing in my discover time, whatever it is. Okay. I got to course correct that this week. So the core four focus simply says, what am I going to do to help to keep the energy flowing, to get me to stop checking boxes? You guessed it. What's my course correction or what's my acceleration? Then we go to a target focus. Targets are different because targets are the things that's your 90 day challenge. It's your one year. It's what you're working on towards, you know, for, for every 90 days to get you to that one year. Or if you're a person who's a 90 day or we have some people who are focused, their 90 days is focused on the end of the year goal. We have other people who their 90 day is simply like, this is where I want to be in 90 days. And like, this would be my year target and I want to blow through it and get here. Or I just want to set these mini goals throughout the course of the year and still be winning and growing. You can do it either way. It doesn't matter. It only matters when you get stale and you're checking the boxes. That's it. Then we have to talk about your course correction. So a target focus says, I'm going to look at body being balanced business over the course of the last week. What are the things that I did or didn't do? Am I on track or off track? Being honest, am I on track or off track based on facts? Then what can I do to either accelerate in this next week or what can I do to course correct in this next week? And you're going to write it down. Then I have a personal focus. Me time. What am I going to do for me? What do I need to do for me? And I write that down. Family focus. How was my family focus in the last week? Where does it need to be this week? And I write it down. Where's my business focus? Now notice I have business one, business two. You might only have one business, that's okay. So I have business one, me, business two, my team. And now I have a focus for me in the office this week and I have a focus for my team this week. And so by the time I'm done, and then I have miscellaneous, there are stuff, there are those not urgent but important things that need to get done. I'm going to drop them into the miscellaneous down below, and I'm done. There's your to-do list if you like a to-do list, which I don't. This is a purpose list. It's a target list. If you do not schedule, you can use this, but what you should do is actually write next to each thing what days of the week they need to be done or when you're going to do that. I'm going to do this Monday at 2 o'clock, and you write those things down. Now, a schedule makes this easier because you take this information and you drop it into your schedule. Yeah, folks, it's that easy. You take this information and you drop it into your schedule. You literally plan out your week and you're set. You have a plan for conquering this week. It's purposeful and it's productive.
over the course of the next week. So I have this, I actually, it's on email. I forward it to myself every day. And so I just check through to make sure that there's nothing that I missed. It's just a quick hit. It doesn't take me long. And then I have this little gem, which is the reflect and project journal. And the reflect and project journal allows me course corrections down at the bottom that go into my schedule if I find that I'm falling off track. So I do the reflect and project daily, and then I do it weekly. Right now, if you just did this and you drop these things into your schedule, you're gonna see your productivity go up. If you're stressed, you're gonna see your productivity go up because you're gonna be focusing on things that are gonna move. This is incredibly, incredibly helpful and useful and will help you to increase your productivity. The only thing that is left is for you to take action on it. I can't do that for you, you have to do it yourself. So you pick a day of the week that you're gonna work on it. Maybe you're watching this today and you go, man, I wanna use this for the rest of my week. Dive in, use it, play with it and then be ready to plug this into your schedule for next week. And you're gonna be shocked at how much more you get done in less time. Because quite frankly, everyone spends too much time on projects that could be done in probably half the time that you're taking. Why? Because you get distracted way too damn easily. So give this a shot. I want. What do I want down below? <laughs> down below, I want you to write a comment and I want the comment to be what's your takeaway from this. And number two, if you plan on using it, like, just let me know, do you plan on using it? And if you have any questions, obviously let me know, but drop them in under this video. Do not email me on this, drop them in on this video. That's all I got for you here today, folks. Dr. Troy Dukowitz, have a fantastic day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.